Hello everyone, this is InsertShoutBE and welcome back to my uh, Game of Thrones rewrite. Uh, last episode uh, was uh, called Winter is Here and it was uh, mainly centered around all the characters uh, at Winterfell, everyone just, you know, gathering together. There were a lot of reunions and it ended with uh, Castle Black uh, getting destroyed by uh, the army of the dead, resulting in both Ed and Ghost uh, getting killed. Um, this is uh, the second episode, uh, which I called Alliance Legacy. It will also take around uh, 57 minutes. Um, and this will actually uh, look at the um, other part of the characters. It starts off in King's Landing. Cersei watches out of her room as the Iron Fleet with the Golden Company is approaching in the distance. The Golden Company arrives on the mainland. Cersei greets and thanks Euron for his services and personally welcomes the new Captain Strickland to the capital. All three of them go to the Red Keep and discuss their war plans while looking at the large floor map. Strickland has brought with him 20,000 men, 2,000 horses and another 24 elephants who are still on the way. Strickland is to stay put in the capital and to wait until his whole army has gathered. Euron is to sail to Dragonstone, which he has to take in the Queen's name. Later, Cersei is met by Kyburn, who tells her the news about the deaths that have broken through the wall. Cersei is, however, dead set on fighting the war against the North, and commands Kyburn to build more scorpions. Afterwards, Cersei is met by Euron, who reminds her of her promise to him. In this conversation, it is revealed that Cersei has sent bounty hunters to capture Jaime for her, and to bring him back to King's Landing. Euron explains that the people need to fear her, which according to him, they don't do enough. They only despise her, but there's no actual fear. She needs to make an example for them. Euron is prepared to give her that example if she marries him. That night, she agrees with him. Euron brings her to Yara, who he still has as a prisoner. Cersei and Yara have a conversation with each other, in which Cersei tells her that she will use her for the greater good. The day after, a scam trial is held in the throne room to decide Yara's fate as a traitor. Eventually, it is decided that she is to be executed in front of the people. After the trial, Cersei accepts Euron's proposal. In the capital, we see how thousands of people are starving and suffering from poverty. A lot of people are furious at Cersei and some even contemplate about starting a revolt. In the Riverlands, Jaime is riding north to Winterfell. He stops at a river where he rests for a bit. Later on, he rides past the twins, who are in ruins. At Winterfell, Jon commands all the lords who have not gathered their men at Winterfell to go to their castles and evacuate them as soon as possible. Jon, Daenerys, Sansa, Arya, Bran and Tyrion hold a war council to discuss the coming battle. Since no one has returned from Castle Black, they presume the worst. Last Hearth and Carholt are yet to be evacuated since they are closest to the wall. John suggests building an outpost somewhere on the King's Road and man it with a couple of dozen men. They can use it as a heads up and if the outpost sees the army of the dead coming towards them from a distance, they can hurry back to Winterfell to warn everyone in time for the battle. Everyone agrees and eventually Podrick, Tormund, Beric and some other men are sent 20 miles upwards to the King's Road and build a small post. Cersei is visited by Euron in her chamber. He tries to seduce her, but without any success, it seems. After a short conversation in which Euron expresses his affection, Cersei agrees, and they both get intimate. Strickland walks around his camp and checks on his men. He is visited by Kyburn, who warns him about disappointing the Queen. Strickland brings up success stories from the Golden Company in the past, and assures him that they will be victorious. Afterwards, Kyburn visits Bronn, who is in a, in a brothel enjoying himself. He offers Bronn a large sum of money if he wants to join them in their fight against the traitors of the north. Bronn hesitates, but when Kyburn brings up that he might be getting river run if he agrees, Bronn accepts the proposition. Later that night, Bronn walks to the shores and remembers the Battle of Blackwater Bay and his time with Tyrion as Hand of the King. He clearly struggles with his motives. Jaime still rides north. Underway, he stops at a tavern to get something to eat. 
Whilst there, a group of bounty hunters come in and announce that they are looking for the Kingslayer. Jamie fails in keeping up his disguise, and a fight breaks out between him and the bounty hunters. He manages to kill one of them and wound another before jumping on his horse and running away. A chase starts, but eventually Jamie's horse gets shot by a crossbow of a bounty hunter, and they both fall on the ground. Jamie gets captured, and the hunters depart back for King's Landing. Alright, that was episode 2, uh, Lion's Legacy. Uh, w again, there's not that much uh, going on in this episode, but l l well, a little bit a little bit more than the last episode. Uh, these two uh, first episodes really are about, you know, getting back into the story, because, you know, it has been, like, almost two years. Uh, that being said, uh, this episode is kind of like, you know, keeping up with um, the characters at King's Landing. The Golden Company has arrived. This time the elephants will come. They're not there yet, but they are coming. Um, that being said, war plans have been made. Brawn has been uh, gathered uh, again. You know, he has, he has been brought back into the game. Um, also a little bit of an emotional scene where Braun actually has these uh, flashbacks of him with Tyrion, uh, you know, about the good old days, uh, figure of speaking. Um, that being said, it ends with Jaime still on his way to uh, Winterfell, but he gets captured by bounty hunters. So that means that he's unable to warn um, uh, Winterfell and everyone present at Winterfell to warn them that the Lannister army is not coming uh, to join them. So that leaves them pretty much in the dark and unaware of things. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you again for uh, watching the video. I hope you liked the episode. If you have some feedback or if you have some comments, please let me know down below and see you guys next time.